Well, thanks everybody for showing up. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Wayne Stamball. I'm the KeyCAD project leader. And I'm going to give you a little talk. It's going to be fairly short today because I want to spend some more time in Q&A than in the past. We've had a lot of questions that have to go unanswered, and I have to spend two hours outside waiting, talking to people. So I'm trying to give us a little bit better Q&A today. So I just want to give you a heads up of what's going on with the, key, the project. In the last year, since my talk last year, we've had a lot of really good things happen. And I don't know how much people follow the project or not, but it's been really things have really are starting to make a pretty solid trajectory upwards. So we released version 5 in July, finally. That, that was uh, pretty painful. I was hoping to have it out last year by FOSDEM, I and mean, we weren't even close. So, and yet, But you know how that goes. Um, so as part of that, we had opened up, CERN had opened up a campaign to fund version, start funding the next version, version 6. We, we were originally hoping, I think, what was the original target? 30K. 30K. And we ended up getting 70,000 uh, Swiss francs in less than 60 days. So if any of those donors are in here, thank you. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. <laughs> I, 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 for my, you know, being in this project for over 10 years now, it's pretty humbling to see that kind of, you know, generosity. So that's fantastic. So, um... Some of the work packages have all, so people are probably wondering, okay, well, now that you got that money, what's happening now? Well, some of the work packages have actually been drafted. So the way we work it is through CERN is we create a work package. Then the, the developer, usually we, we don't have a, we really don't bid in the classical sense that, yeah, here, you go do it, because there's only a handful of developers that can really, really get, yes, actually dig around in the KiCad code base because it's rather large and it's rather complex. So there's a handful of people that can, fulfill those packages and some of them have already been assigned and, and metered out so talk a little bit more than that a little bit more about that later um, but on the donation front there's been a lot of interesting developments our friends at Eisler have yep there they are they're here <laughs> the, the, yeah the, the gentleman who did the last presentation he's also part of Eisler um, they're um, donating every board order they get that has that's with a KeyCAD file with a known key, like you send it, send them your PCB new file. Um, they make a donation for every order that you that you order from them with KeyCAD, and then it goes directly to CERN, and that's set up and it's all automatic. And they've also added an extra link on their website, so when you place your order and if you want to donate at the same time as you place your board order, that also goes directly to CERN to the KeyCAD Foundation. So, thank thank you, Eisler, for that. Um, I don't know how familiar Europe is with the System76 people, but System76 is a U.S. Uh, Linux. They're, they're a big Ubuntu um, uh, uh, computer maker, and they do laptops and desktops. And um, you know, they, they basically always bought pre-made hardware for their, you know, like like a lot of resellers do. Last year, they decided they were going to do a new desktop called Thelios, and I don't know if you've seen them yet, but they're very cool. They're very neat. If you get a chance, go to their website and look them up. And they took, they gave us a percentage of a, they decided to donate to um, four open source software projects that they use in house to do their, to you know, run their business. And last year between, I think it was like November to the end of January this year, their total sales, and I haven't heard what that amount is yet, but they're going to take a part of that and donate to KeyCat as well. So that's really good news. Um, they gave, and they created this quirky little promotional video. I don't know if you've any, anybody's seen it, but there's a link to it there that has KeyCAD in it. And on another person who wrote, there's a gentleman who wrote a book called KeyCAD Like a Pro with a company called Tech Explorations. He's also going to donate for every, every, every sale of the book. He's also going to donate a percentage of the proceeds to the KeyCAD through CERN. That's in the final, because it takes a bit, to get the routing done and whatnot, that's almost uh, in the process of being approved, approved, so that should be done soon. And of course, there's the never-ending like improvements in our symbol and footprint and model 3D, our 3D model libraries. I don't know how many of you use KeyCAD directly, but if you look back, if you go back and look at our, our libraries at four, and you go look at them now, I mean, think, what is our library up to, like five gigabytes, six gigabytes a download? It's really, it's really, yeah, it's, it's really, and they're really high quality. We have some people that are really, 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 in fact, there's more contributors to the library, I think the library, well, the library group than there is source, 
you know, the actual source developer. So it's really phenomenal what's going on there. This year, uh, about a year, about two years ago, we had a couple of new developers that joined the project and they got up to speed really fast and did a lot of contributions. So for the first time in a long time, I've actually get given three developers commit access, commit privileges to the, 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 the main source repo in KiCad. And that's really helped move development along really quickly in the last year. It's been pretty phenomenal. Um, we also have new developers. We have a lot more people like at the fringes. You know, I see patches from people I, that I don't recognize, so that's really encouraging that you're interested to help contribute to KiCad keeps growing. For those of you in the U.S., and if you haven't heard this, in the U.S. in April, April 27th or 26th and 27th in Chicago, there's going to be the first ever KiCon. There's going to be a conference, and it's going to be user user focused. It's not going to be I'm not going to be talking. I, I don't think I'm going to be talking to developers. Um, so if you're if you're interested, to, you get a chance to go to that. I think it's going to be really good. The people that are helping to run it, uh, Chris Gamble, and some of the other folks that live up in the Chicago in that the Great Lakes area, they uh, really it looks like they're going to have a nice thing. And it's, so far, we got DigiKey as one of our primary sponsors. We got um, the, the folks, I don't know if you're familiar with Snap EDA. They're like a library. They provide library tools for our friends at Eisler. Yes, our friends at Eisler also. I, I saw you up there. Um, so, yeah, we're all looking forward to that. It should be interesting. Um, and that will be like two days of, um, you know, personal experience, people who use KiCad on a regular basis. I think some of the, um, I want to say some of the Maker Faire people are going to be there to do some of the talks, you know, you know their experience, you know, how they use KiCad, the things they do with KiCad. So that, that's really, really interesting. And so if you get a chance, I highly recommend you that you show up and make, make it to that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, I get to do the keynote on that one. So, so yeah, that will be the first ever KiCad conference anywhere in the world. So that's exciting. Okay. So you're probably going, well, where's version 6? Because, you know, everybody, you get one version out, and everybody's going to, the first question out of everybody's mouth is, when's version 6 coming out? Well, it hasn't started yet. And there's a reason for that. On Linux, we ran into a problem. There's been a transition with WX Widgets, which is our primary tool, which is our UI tool, tool set. They've been migrating over to GTK, from GTK2 to GTK3, right? Well, we ran into a problem because WX Python, which is our glue, which is our, Glue Python interface still is built with GTK2 because it can't be built with GTK3 and 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 Python 2. It has to be built with Python 2. So you can't run a GTK2 instance and a GTK3 instance in the same application. Boom. So we I had to make a decision. It wasn't one I wanted to make, but we're going to have to fix it. So that's that's why we're getting a version 5.1, and that's going to be that's what drove that. Um, so what drove the other problem with that was GTK3, their standard canvas is completely broken. Not, it doesn't work at all. So we were completely screwed. So if you use the legacy canvas, if you're familiar with KiCad and use the legacy canvas, like in the, the board editor, the schematic editor, the graphics are complete junk. And so we were like, ah. So we had to port the graphics, the high-end graphics library from the, P, the board editor to the schematic editor. That's already done. It's been done for a while. Um, so we had to disable the legacy canvas because it would be useful. We get a bu you know bug reports when that first transition first, first took place. The bug you know the bug tracker was just flooded with the same bug report basically. Um, we had to modify the Python scripting to support two and three. Before we only supported two because we only had to. WX Python only supported Python two. But the new Phoenix project, which is the next evolution of WX Python only supports three. So now we have to be able to build with two and three and all the different combinations of WX Python, WX, <laughs> WX widgets, and GTK2 and GTK3. Uh, it's a mess. So um, we did the, we updated uh, the, uh, there's been a lot of UI interface changes, which is, um, you'll notice that the footprint editor now looks like the symbol library editor where you have the pane on the left and all the, you know, all your footprints show up and you can edit it. It's very similar in design because we had, the five transition, we had the leftover, we had the new design in the schematic symbol editor, the old design in the footprint editor, and that's been fixed. We switched to Cairo for printing. We get a little bit better quality um, printing for, so that was a big change. Um, 
The usability, the, I can't under, I can't uh, overstate the UI changes. Uh, we, we, one of our new developers is a ex Adobe, he's a retired Adobe employee, and he's a UI guy, and he just bangs out code like, yeah, he makes the rest of us look bad. He's really been, <laughs> so the UI, if, if, if nothing else, 5.1 will be compelling just for the UI changes and the fixes. It's really significant. I mean, even though there's no new functionality in there, it's just the whole feel of, you know, he's basically the whole, you know, the whole suite of you know, dialogues and how they behave. It's, and so the, you know, it's a lot more coherent than it's ever been, which if you've used KiCad, you know that's not always been the case. Well, I mean, it's, you know, you got 20 different people over 20 some odd years doing, it's just how it, wor that's how it works. And it's not, we're not the only open source project that suffers from that problem. So, and we had approved clipboard support, so now it's more like your normal cut, copy, paste instead of the old way we did it. It's still, it's still, we still don't do a lot of copy and paste between the different editor, editors, because that's a tricky proposition, because some things you can't paste from a footprint editor from the board into the footprint editor, because no, some of those things don't mean anything to the footprint. So, well, we're going to work on that in version 6. So, we feature freeze, we did the feature freeze in December. And we were tantalizingly close to getting <laughs> RC1 out. I was really wanted to have another bullet here that said RC1's been tagged and released, but it didn't happen because there's one bug left, and he's sitting up there, that nobody can figure, and he's got the only computer, he's got the only computer, and I wouldn't have believed it if I wouldn't have seen it with my own eyes, but we're, we, you know, we, I spent some time this morning and it didn't fix it. So we get that one, that's the last, that's the last showstopper that's holding up the um, the 5.1 RC1. Then after RC1's released, I'll give the uh, translators and our librarian guys you know, chance to get their, their last minute changes in and get everything ready. So hopefully, hopefully, if nothing too egregious goes wrong, we should be late at the end of February, beginning of March, 5.1 should be rolling out. So, so that's kind of exciting. And then once once we branch 5.1, then the, the main repo will be open for version 6 development. And Because I know there's quite a few people that have some significant changes and features that are, are actually ready to merge. It's just, I don't, it, I don't want, if I open the merge window up, everybody will forget about getting this done and we'll go work on 6. And then we really need to get this out and get it done. Just, just because I don't want our Linux users to be half, half key, we, we could give them like half a key cat and I don't, I didn't think that was a good option, so I made the decision to postpone V6 development. So that, that's on my shoulders, but I think it was a good decision, at least the way I see it. I'm not going to talk too much about version 6. I've talked about that before. You can always go to the KiCad website and see the roadmap, the V6 roadmap. Some of that stuff's already been pulled into, v, like the, the graphics layer. That was actually pulled in to fix the problem. So some of that's it's a little out of date, but most, of the, most everything else that's going to happen in, v, in version six is um, already already defined. So, and just I want to say thank you again. Uh, I'd like to thank every to everybody who contributed to KiCad, whether it's I mean whether it's libraries, um, translations, <laughs> source code. There's a lot of people that actually work on KiCad that may, you know make it work. It's a really big project. People don't I don't think people realize how many. How much there is involved in all the like the packaging, the you know the guys who maintain our server, our build servers, all that stuff. A lot of work goes on behind the scenes. I mean, I might be out in front of everybody here, but there's a lot of people that make that happen. And once again, thanks to everybody that donated. I mean, like I said, that 70k Swiss francs was huge. I mean, I'm not can I can't overstate that enough. Um, Thank you for your interest and support. I, you know, we keep growing the number of reports. I get a lot of reports from people, um, board vendors, that tell me that the number of orders they get now from KiCad is really like Osh Park in the United States. That I, I know some of their their guys, and they tell me the number of orders, you know, board orders they get that are key, direct KiCad order, you know, because you don't have to convert everything to Gerber. You just send them your board file, and it they 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 produce your boards from the, right from the KiCad. And the number just keeps growing and growing. So we're definitely making inroads. Um, and that's really, that's the goal. The goal is to keep moving KiCad. I'm an engineer, so if people don't know that, I'm a double E, right? And the reason I work on KiCad is I actually use KiCad in my day job, right? So it is capable. 
And if you don't, I haven't seen, if you don't believe that, go look around some of the really complex projects that people are doing. I mean, really complex stuff. You know, we have a guy that wants us to go above 30. He has a 32 layer board. And he wants us, right now that's our limit. We have 32, 32 copper layers. Let me, let me clarify that a little bit. He wants to do more than 32 copper layers. <laughs> so, I mean, it's serious. It's serious. I mean, so yes, we're, 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 are we on par with the big players? No. But every, every version that comes out, every new version, six will, six will close a lot of the feature gaps. You know? So we're just, you know, we're just marching along. We'll get there. I, we're going to get there eventually. But it's definitely something that you can really uh, make hat use to, uh, if, you're a, if you're an engineer and you need a board layout, you'd, you know, especially if cost is, because I work for a small company, so cost is a factor, and almost all the big players in that game now are very, very, it's expensive. It's really, really expensive to, you know, buy, buy board development suites. You know, if anybody works in the commercial bit world, they know what I'm talking about. Um, I also like to thank CERN and Javier for setting all this up. This wouldn't happen without them, so thank, thank you to them for setting it up. So. All right, any questions? Yep. So I've got two parter. Uh, firstly, simple one, how much in other currencies, what is 70K to the French? Oh, the, the question is what is 70? What's that? Oh, thanks. Because I, I saw your voice. Yeah, uh, the question is what is 70,000 Swiss francs? It's, it's almost, it's, it's just slightly more than a US dollar. So it's almost, it's almost one to one. You could almost, I think in the, there you go. And one. And I, <laughs> and one. <laughs> and your second question, go ahead. So yes, uh, second question is, I've been using Eagle for some time. Uh, I think there's still some problems with the Eagle import. Are you, is there any plans to fix? Which, uh, the question was, there are some still issues with the Eagle import, and so my next question is going to be which. We, we know there's some things because KiCad, there's some functionality in KiCad that does, that, like, <laughs> The, the biggest thing I can think of is um, constraints, like the, uh, the, 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 the geometry constraints. The, the geometry um, constraints in Eagle don't map one-to-one -to, -one to what KiCad does. Now, some of that's, we're, that's one of the version 6 fixes. Is gonna, we're going to have a full-featured constraint manager. So at some point, we should be able to get pretty damn I don't know if we'll ever get 100% because they use a kind of a funky matrix thing, right? With the, it's a little different than what... Um, so we may never get pure 100% import in, but everything else. So I mean, the issue that I'm having is with the design rules under Eagle um, can override library pad management, and that doesn't seem to import well. It certainly didn't under KiCad 5. It doesn't import well. You end up with pad changes rendering the board um, <coughs> completely. Yeah. Yeah. So if you say, I like running round pads instead of the oblongs, which are much smaller pads. Oh, okay. And I, 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 and I, I think I, under, I was just trying to understand. I've it. actually put two bug reports. So, the, so the question is, is, and I'm, I'm assuming Eagle can do this on the fly because it's been a long time since. I mean, I haven't used Eagle in a deck over a decade, so it's, I'm not, not really. I don't even remember that far back hardly anymore. So, um, the question was about being able to change pad shapes and on the fly when you import it. And that's probably going to be problematic because we usually, we use hard, um, basically hard coded pad geometry. So like if you have a footprint, right? Now you can update a footprint, like say you change your existing footprint, we have a way to update automatically, but we don't have a way to change them on the fly. Like say, I, instead I, I don't want all my pads to be oblong instead of round. Yeah, we don't have a way to do that. It'd be nice if just when you import an Eagle project into GCAD, it would actually read those design rules and say, actually, no, I need at the import stage. Okay. Because otherwise, then you get a board that is just doesn't all right. pass proper checks because you have problems. Okay. We'll have to look at the top. So we'll have to look at that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked at that, so I don't know what the answer to that is. Two bug reports, so okay. That you haven't really looked at yet, which is my, it's my problem is that I've, I've reported this. Three or four months ago, at least. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, would, I have to talk. Yeah, I don't do much work with the Eagle importer, so that's not my my exact straight, strong point. So, uh, so uh, answer that? well, yeah, the answer is uh, 
there is no PCD application <coughs> that cater for all the possible DRC constraint systems. So they are slightly different in every program, and uh, it's futile to, 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 to have one-to-one -one compatibility. What I would advise is just to add a warning saying that this Eagle design has Eagle-specific DRC rules. Be careful. Check this board before you send it to manufacturing or fix the rule. Yeah, it's and, and we and we know we know that we know that from other and we know that from other board. Yeah, we. Yeah, we know we know that from other board packages too. That, that when you pull a constraint in, what it means in that board package means doesn't necessarily map to the same constraints that we have in KeyCAD. It's not e it's not an easy problem to solve. The, que the question, the, the, somebody, people know me in here, so they're going to know what the answer to that question. The, the question was, the question was, could we simplify the uh, user interface, the KiCad user interface, so that it's easier to use and it'd be more like Fritzing? I'm going. I, you know what? If when we have all the other problems solved, we can talk about that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, we get. And, I, and and don't get me wrong. I, I I'd love to su support everybody's project every way they wanted it, but that's just not reality. I mean, one of the problems I get is every once in a while somebody was, gets mad because our UI doesn't work well on an 800 by 600 resolution monitor. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> who who lays out boards on an 800 by 600 monitor? Who does that? My eyes aren't good enough to do that. I, I, they don't make monitors big enough to lay out boards. And so when, when I hear people say that, I'm like, come on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I get it. If there was some way it was easy to make, you know, make all those, like, different configurations work. But it's, yeah, we got, to me, that's like when, okay, when we got all these features done and we're on par with the big guys, okay, we can go back and revisit that. But I think we got a lot of work to do before we get to that point. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. the The question was the question was um, moving from right now the the source. the The question was moving from Launchpad to Git GitLab, right? Yeah. No. Okay. There's um, I didn't talk about it, and I probably should have. There's currently we are in the process of migrating um, the KiCad servers. I think the web server's done. Correct me if I'm wrong. Who's? Yeah. Yeah. So we're migrating to CERN servers. Okay. So the website's done. Is the, are the downloads, are the package downloads done too? Yeah, they're, they're available. I think we should configure some of the build packages so they upload the new server into the, the old one. Uh, yeah, okay. Old and part of that discussion was at some point in the future. Because one of the problems right now, if you don't know, you know, KeyCAD, the source is still in Launchpad with, with that. I mean, we use Git, but it's Launchpad's support of Git isn't necessarily the best. Um, so we're, we're there with, that's where our source is. And, of course, like the libraries are all in, in GitHub. And so for me as a project manager, because i got to interface with all those different just separate groups, it actually makes more work for me. So the whole, the, the, the end goal is to get all that in a GitLab instance somewhere. And so it's just going to take time, you know. But, yes, that has been talked about. And it's, it probably will happen at some point when... You know, we just one step at a time. We just got to, you know, I don't want to try to, you know, I don't want to create a lot of work for, you know, because that's something I don't do. So that means it's work somebody else does. And I really don't want to, you know, bury somebody and just on a whim say, hey, we're just going to totally migrate to GitLab tomorrow. And that's not very realistic. But I think it'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. Is there some list where people can have local support or so, so get a head start? I, I design... PCPs for 15 years with Eagle, but uh, to, to switch on, I would like to have a head start. Some g g go to somebody with some problem and talk together and, and see how he works. Okay, the, que the question is, is there a list you can go to for, I'm assuming you mean user support or help. Yeah. Yes, there is. The, the, there's the KeyCat info. There's a, there's a forum, and it's pretty heavily, it's pretty big. I mean, it's it's run by Chris Gamble in the United States. He set it up. It's really, uh, 
you know, a lot of times some of the developers show up there, you know, for like the really tough stuff or the regular, even the advanced users don't necessarily know the answer to the question. But it's actually a pretty good, it's actually a pretty good resource for a new user. It's very good. And there's a lot, you know, there's usually somebody that can answer your question. You know, you don't, don't, don't post user questions on the, mail, the dev, dev mailing list. It'll take a while for you to get an answer. But, but yeah, KeyCat info. If you go to our website and go under, um, res, is it resources? There's a drop down. You'll see the blogs. It's under there. There's a direct link to it. You can go, go to it from there. Yeah. So, actually, have the question, questions, if you don't mind. Uh, first one about schematic editor. So, uh, right now, when we are connecting components in schematic editor, we need to really think before, <laughs> to think when we place components before we only have rubber band connection, right? So, if we try to drag components like uh, uh, when we are already connected them, it's a uh, we basically need to remove all connections and do it. Rubber band. Right, yeah. So do, do you have any plans to implement like right angle connections to right and direct components? Yes. The question is, are we going to get rubber banding support? I think that's in six, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's in the roadmap, the six roadmap. So oh, wow. we, have plan on some, we have plans to have somebody work on that. When, when that happens, you know, and I don't know, you just, you just use the stable version? So you're using 5.0.2? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if, you know. One of the goals of KeyCat, if you're not aware, is I make it a really strict point about making the nightly builds as, you, as stable as possible. I, we don't like, I'm not like, let's just dump everything into the repo and let's go and nothing works. Um, I, we don't do that. And I never let that happen. And I don't know that I ever will. So, because if you want people to really help you test, you have to have a reasonably usable nightly build. And so a lot of people, in fact, at work, I use. I always keep a stable installed in case something goes wrong. But I pretty much use nightly builds every every one at my job. So in, uh, in okay. question six, I can expect those uh, right angle connections to appear. Right? Yeah, yes. So second question is about uh, PCB editor. Editor. Uh, I just noticed that in uh, 5.0, uh, pre-router integration buttons disappeared. So like in uh, KiCat uh, four. Uh, there were some buttons in PCB editor, PCB new uh, buttons for integration with the uh, free router, right? So those buttons just disappeared. So okay, your free router. Your, okay, the Sorry, question was what? Question, the, you, the question was what happened to the free router button? The reason the free router button went away is because basically that interface that we used for free router went away. You can still use it, but you have to. It's a manual operation right now. The, the old interface, you have to actually, you used to be able to, there was actually a website link that when you clicked on it, it would actually take you to the free router, the one on, the one through your browser. And, um, you know, it, it would do the, uh, it would export the, um, the, uh, the Spectra DSN file and then upload it and then you could, it was automatic. That, that interface is gone now, so we, you have to do it manually. You just have to go export the Spectra directly, and then you can just open up. You can run. You get the JVM, and you can just run um, free router locally instead of through the web interface. It's that's why that that's why that went away. Okay, sorry guys, we need to move on with the program. Uh, What's that? <laughs> somebody, yeah, there you go. Somebody wrote a Python script. And that, that's why we have a scripting language. So. Okay, let's thank Wayne again. Thank you.